Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Behind the Headlines. And in this programme tonight, we shall be discussing the new Trump Bible, known as God Bless the USA Bible, that's being promoted and sold by Donald Trump. This also uh, includes the lyrics for Trump's anthem, known as God Bless the USA by country singer uh, Lee Greenwood as well as the US Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence and the Pledge of Allegiance. This is actually a Patriots Bible. And uh, we're discussing, is Trump using the God card to win over the Christian electorate for the forthcoming presidential election? Or is this a kind of wider part of where America is currently with this progressive liberal agenda that's dominating the Democrats and the White House at the moment? Uh, Reagan, when, when I first came across this video of the USA uh, Bible version of the Bible, God bless the USA Bible, all wrapped around the American flag. I, I thought this was going to be a, a topic that was going to spark your interest as oh, well as you having a lot to say on it. Um, because I mean, this, this is something that it's very American, right? Um, and uh, you know, we don't have anything like this in our own politics. And now we see Trump with the uh, God bless the USA Bible. Oh, Simon, I, I, as soon as it came through and I, I saw what we were going to be talking about, I thought, yes, I definitely do have my thoughts on this. And um, as, as an American who has now lived in the UK for uh, 21 years, um, it's abundantly clear to me, especially due to the polarity of US politics, that the assumption is, OK, I'm, I'm going to be in one particular camp or the other. So th this is a story that people are going to say, what, what do you think about? Uh, on one hand, you have many different translations that are out there. This is a King James version, authorized version, uh, but it's packaged in a very different way with the stars and stripes around it on, uh, presumably it's leather. I didn't actually yeah, it's leather. Is it, yeah, is it yeah. a, a with, with gold leaf. Is it sheepskin? Gold leaf? Gold leaf? Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we have that, but also it has uh, a very real uh, taste of Americana inside as well. Now, as great as the Constitution is, and as great as the Bill of Rights is, and as great as the Pledge of Allegiance, well, that there is some debate on the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and all of that is, I, I don't ever recall those being elements that were inspired by God. I don't ever uh, re recall those being definitive parts of the Holy Scriptures. And, and so it's, it's, it's unique that they are included in this particular place. What's missing, uh, and, I, and maybe I'm wrong, forgive me if I'm wrong, I don't want to misrepresent uh, Mr. Greenwood or um, former President Trump at all, but what's missing are the lyrics to the national anthem, uh, indeed the lyrics to God Bless the USA. Lee Greenwood's hit from the 80s. And viewers, you might want to go and watch the very corny video or maybe simon will you give us a rendition will you oh of course of course i will yeah we're not live so i'm not going to stay tuned um yeah, stay later on. yeah. Oh, but also look, look it, it, but i think we also have to put this in its kind of social context as well oh, yeah. uh the god bless the usa bible and and it's a kind of message i think to christians to to realize that they feel like they're losing their country Yes. Yeah. Um, losing it to a kind of globalist agenda. It's no longer um, a kind of, you know, America has always been a, an isolationist country on its own. It's a world superpower. It's a power in its own right, underpinned by the influence of Christianity within the institutions of government. And the fact is that we've seen certainly right through the Obama administration, now through the Biden administration, a complete contempt for Christian America. And is this Bible not a, a way of shoring up uh, America's Christian support base by realizing that the founding fathers of the United States of America were influenced by, by the Bible, they were influenced by, by Christians, and so therefore reflects the time that America is built on a Christian foundation more so than any other nation, more so than this country. Um, and when you look at that and you see that that is under attack, uh, and therefore you can see why Trump is wanting to promote and sell 
the, uh, the new King James version of the Bible called the uh, God Bless the USA Bible as a way of reassuring his support base, but also sending a message out to wider America that America is still a Christian country, still based on those foundations uh, of when the early fathers created the United States. Uh, and this is what I think the, the, the battle for the heart and the soul of the United States is currently taking place politically, but also spiritually in the United States. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting, Simon, because there's a lot of perspective on the USA and its Christian foundation as such. And inarguably, Christianity had a significant role in the foundation. However, most of the founding fathers might interest viewers uh, to do some research on this were not what we would call, any, by any frame of the imagination, born-again believers. Many of them were actually deists, so they believed in a higher power, but they didn't necessarily believe that that is the God of the Bible. And, and so when it comes across in the Constitution and in the Bill of Rights, you'll notice there's a lot of talk about God. Even our politicians across the board in the USA, on the right and the left, use the name of God, but don't believe in every case or uphold the belief that there is only one way to God through Jesus Christ. They don't actually emphasize the God of the Bible. Now, of course, Trump is, in this case, emphasizing the God of the Bible. And we're not going to you know, impugn his motives. I have my own feelings about his motives for it. Um, but there definitely, there's something that can be said. There are a few truths that I think stand up uh, that are not opposed here. First of all, there is the reality that righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is approach to any people. True righteousness is found in Jesus Christ. True righteousness is found in the God of the Bible. And so for the nation to heal, for the nation to find its moorings, it must return to those foundational moral truths of Scripture and an adherence to the righteousness therein. Uh, that's 100% valid. At the same time, it's very much a legitimate thing to question whether or not this God Bless the USA Bible is particularly well thought through in a spiritual sense because it brings up the issue of, well, actually the Constitution speaks of freedom of religion. Uh, a lot of what Trump has said, while I agree with we need to make America pray again, but what does that actually look like? And what, what does that mean? How does that transform the society? And does Trump himself actually have a living, spirit-filled prayer life? I don't know. That's between him and God. I have my question marks over it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but um, the, these are all things that we have to, to weigh up. So, um, you know, I, I definitely don't desire to demonize former President Trump. Uh, I think we have to make objective statements and call a spade a spade where it, it, it's, it's there. At the same time, uh, I am not convinced that this God Bless the USA Bible, as right as some of the statements behind its motive are, is really going to have the impact uh, that is, is being presented because I don't believe it's coming from a pure place. Absolutely. So let's uh, remind ourselves of uh, this story that uh, uh, broke uh, last week just before Easter. So um, the uh, God Bless the USA Bible um, that was uh, announced a couple of days before Easter last week uh, is being promoted and sold by the Republican presidential Donald Trump, uh, known as the Trump Bible. Uh, Trump has partnered with the American country singer Lee Greenwood, uh, who produced the God Bless the USA uh, song that's become the, the anthem for um, the big political campaign rallies that uh, Trump does. The God Bless the USA Bible is being sold for $60. Uh, is the uh, King James Version includes lyrics from Greenwood's God Bless the USA, as well as the US Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, former President Trump is playing the God card in this year's presidential election against the incumbent, Joe Biden, to win the Christian vote. 
or does this reflect a deeper concern regarding the spiritual state of the United States? The Democrats under US President Biden have embraced globalism, secular humanism, progressive liberalism, are that are completely odds with biblical teaching and morality? And does the God bless the USA Bible reflect a wider Christian and conservative movement of Christian nationalism that's sweeping over the US at this critical time, particularly as we're in this US presidential election year with the elections coming up in November? I, I think we also have to understand this, this kind of dual history mm. that America has gone through ever since it, its foundation um, back in 1776. Uh, when uh, the America gained independence from from, Brit uh, from Great Britain and the British Empire, uh, was was the fact that um, we we saw a lot of the ideas from the English Civil War, the time of um, the time of King Charles the First, overthrown then by Oliver Cromwell, uh, the idea of the Levellers, one man, one vote. Uh, a new political system because when uh, Cromwell took power he became the crown protectorate so therefore we had the first idea of what a modern presidency would look like with Oliver Cromwell. Those ideas were rejected in this country and came over pretty much with the Mayflower voyage um, to America and of course then the ideas were set up of why born again Christians wanted to flee Europe, they wanted to flee Britain because they want that freedom to worship God in the way that they saw fit. So we see that America is kind of unique in terms of nations around the world of having that biblical foundation. But like you said, there's also been that uh, um, Freemasonry Christianity battle yeah. at the very heart of America. Because, you know, you go to Washington, D.C., and I spent a lot of time there, I've worked there. And you see the monuments devoted to George Washington. And you see the Masonic influence there as well. So it's a kind of mixed history. And I think this is also with this presentation of the God Bless the USA Bible is again a kind of mixture, uh, a mixture of wanting to stand up for the biblical ideas laid out in the US Constitution and the Bill of Rights and this whole separation of freedom. And also the early pioneers uh, and founding fathers of America understood that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this is why you have the division of power between the White House, you know, the, the, which is the presidency, the upper house, which is the Senate, and the lower house, which is the Congress. And uh, because if a, 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 a elected representative takes too much power, you enter into forms of dictatorship. So I think this is all in the concept as well as the American Christians feeling like they're losing their Christian identity as well. It's an interesting thing to observe because there is a sense that many Christians feel like the nation is losing its identity, but they're not discipled particularly well in how to see that identity yeah. regained. And this is where the intentions, even the best of intentions and people viewing this as a really good thing. President Trump, he made his uh, pitch on Tuesday uh, last for the God Bless the USA Bible. And he said, religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. Well, they're, they're very present if people will actively undertake their responsibility in making disciples and in going out and uh, proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ both in word and work. But unfortunately, there are many people who are being disillusioned by this. And I know, I know people who tragically are disillusioned with the whole idea of church in the USA, of Christianity in the USA, how they put it to me is American Christianity. This is a terminology that's been going a long time before Trump. But uh, because they have seen people who they have upheld as moral standards, as beacons of light, suddenly making excuses even for alleged crimes that Trump has committed in the past, um, recognizing that maybe some of what's been there is true, but well, we can, we can just leave that aside. We can forget that. We're not, we're not electing a pastor. And that's caused them, especially when many of them have been victims of the same sin or in some cases repentant perpetrators of, of sin, it's caused them a bit of an identity crisis, which does more damage to the cause of Christ. And so there's a lot that we have to weigh up here and a lot that we have to balance. 
individuals who he's gathered around him. People will point to various spiritual individuals, spiritual, I, I put in air quotes, because some of them may be legitimate. Others, I have very strong reason to believe, and I've said on our programs before, I believe to be fraudulent. Individuals who have themselves been caught in adulterous and uh, illicit sexual scandal. Uh, all of these things do not bode well, and so it, it's created a crisis of trust. But uh, Trump says, and we can agree, yes, Christianity is something that is, that is missing from how the country is operating on an increasing way. You cannot look at the USA now and say that it is in a healthy place uh, across any spectrum. He says, I truly believe we need to bring them back and have to bring them back fast. Uh, in his video on his Truth Social site. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion in our country. Uh, well, shall we have a look at some of uh, Trump's comments and hear from the man himself? I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood. Who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA? in connection with promoting the God Bless the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our Founding Father documents, yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this God Bless the USA Bible. And it's just very important and very important to me I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. Religion is so important. It's so missing, but it's going to come back, and it's going to come back strong, just like our country is going to come back strong. We must offend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be, again, a great nation. Our Founding Fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back, and to make America great again. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you, and God bless the USA. There you go, which leads us into the uh, question for this program after seeing uh, Trump's promotion and selling of the God Bless USA a Bible. Uh, is the Trump Bible an election gimmick? As particularly as we move very quickly to November's presidential election. Just unpacking some of the stuff that he actually said um, regarding the promotion of the God Bless the USA Bible, which is mm. difficult to pronounce. I wish you had just said God Bless America Bible, be easier to, uh, to actually say. Um, he, he was saying that uh, it's his favorite book uh, he later added that we have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be, again, a great nation. He goes on to say that the $60 Bible is the King James Version and will include lyrics from Greenwood's God Bless the USA, uh, as well as the US Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence and Pledge of Allegiance. Now, for any British viewers, this is very confusing um, because we don't have to swear an oath of allegiance to the Constitution because we don't have one. We have an unwritten Constitution and we certainly don't have to pledge a loyalty to the Union Jack, which is, which is the flag. Um, but he also says that Trump commended the Founding Fathers for doing a tremendous thing when they built the America on Judeo-Christian values. And he said that a uh, foundation is under attack. Now, looking at the time uh, around 1776, there wasn't much alternative. 
Uh, it wasn't really until uh, Napoleon took power after the French Revolution, uh, around the time of the early 19th century, did we have the idea of a secular humanist ideology and a mindset that came forth with uh, Napoleon and the French Revolution that occurred in 1789. Uh, and so therefore the only alternative really for the United States was that Judeo-Christian heritage. Um, but also the fact that he says this is his favourite book that troubles me. And the big question I think we need to ask in the programme is that you cannot legislate uh, for Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's not a political movement. It's a spiritual movement. And if, Amer and if he's serious about America bringing Christianity back to the forefront of US politics, back to the forefront of American society, then surely the order of the day firstly is repentance and national days of prayer uh, and seeking the Lord and then seeking a spiritual revival that will then transform the political landscape instead of the political landscaping landscape, transform society. Because we know that the previous Trump administration from 2017 to 2020 did an incredible good job on a lot of Christian biblical issues and pushed back on a lot of these things, including uh, which pathed the way for Road versus Wade to be overturned, strong defense of Israel, strong defense of the family, uh, and, and yet had no real impact on American society. Well, one of the issues that Trump uh, really, he just kind of regurgitates the common feeling that many have, uh, saying that this is uh, built on Judeo-Christian values. And to some degree, yes, there was an element of Judeo-Christian value behind everything. But um, th these founding fathers, while they were, for the most part, Protestant in their background, uh, they had diverging traditions and while most of the founding fathers would have been a part of and on membership roles in some particular churches many would have been baptized in one way or another uh, they would have been married in churches that was quite common so there was a judeo-christian fr framework they were heavily influenced by theistic rationalism so it's different from secular humanism and that god is still involved but it, it had this idea of higher power but ultimately we get right and wrong from best lived human experience okay that's the uh, a paraphrase uh, of that and so ultimately um, even um, t Thomas Paine, well, well he, he was a protege of uh, Benjamin Franklin, would deny that the Almighty ever did communicate anything to man by speech, language, or vision. So deity exists, but he hasn't really shown us what's right. Um, he would go and say, I believe in one God and no more, and I hope for happiness beyond this life. I believe in equality. I believe that r religious duties consist in doing justice, loving mercy, and endeavoring to make her fellow creatures happy, which is... It's all very, very good, but it's not explicitly Christian. And so the question then is, can we legislate for morality? Yes, and we should. We should legislate that which is good, right, and true, what is moral. Can we meaningfully legislate Christianity? And I would say no, because this, ha this has been done. Constantine was the first emperor who essentially not only legalized Christianity, but he legislated for special perks to Christians, which then began to subvert, really, the whole essence of um, the church's belief that my kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, is not of this world. And it cannot be spread and it cannot be accomplished in a sincere and authentic way outside of spiritual transformation. So political machinations can only go so far, and they, there is a place for the political 100% in society to legislate for morality, but it must not, and the Constitution made this very clear, uh, present Christianity or any other religion for that matter as usurping another. Uh, the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which is included in this Bible, uh, states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So those are the First Amendment rights which advocate for that religious liberty 
and liberty of conscience. I mean, it, it's incredible. I mean, I think we have to really kind of respect uh, uh, America, expect, mm. respect America's uh, traditions and its uh, democratic institutions. I mean, to actually write the Bill of Rights just after the American War of Independence of 1776 um, it is quite uh, incredible in terms of the values and what the United States has, has founded upon. But again, it, it's a, a question is you cannot legislate for the human heart. Right. Only God can do that. Only by the power of the gospel can someone's heart be changed from a, a, a godless evil person to a godly righteous man or woman. Only God can do that. You can't legislate for that. Uh, and my kind of fear a little bit on this one is that Trump is also seeing that his warmest support has been from Christian evangelicals and therefore he knows by partnering with them uh, and he's known that when Republicans have won previous elections, whether it was through Ronald Reagan or um, George W. Bush Jr., what uh, those uh, Republicans leaders did very well was to cultivate the Christian vote that got them in to the White House. And I think he then is realising now that if he's going to win the presidency, then he needs again to win that Christian vote in the United States. But how much he goes on to honour this, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a matter of debate because we need to look at the fruit. Um, and of course, what he also says in this one as well, he says, I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get the Bible. We must make America pray again. Trump argued that Christians are under siege and we must protect what content that is pro-God. He goes on the website, says uh, selling the Bible says it's an easy to read Bible, large print that uh, will be perfect to take to church, a Bible study, work or travel, etc. Trump has partnered with uh, Greenwood in the past. God bless the USA has become Trump's signature entrance music during his rallies and played occasionally at the outset of the Washington White House events during the Trump administration. Uh, he also then compared to other leading Republicans, the former president who is twice divorced is facing four separate criminal cases, rarely talks about his religious beliefs, still Trump regularly wins the support of religious Republicans. So the big question I think, and I'm not the one to answer this, uh, and you are, uh, Reagan, is that should the Bible contain the US Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and a Pledge of Allegiance to the American Republic? I mean, surely we are told to swear allegiance to Yeshua and the God of Israel in the Bible, and, and that's where our allegiances lie. The, the Bible itself is comprised only of those 66 books that are divinely inspired by God. So whatever you put in the binding and in between the bindings and all manner of publishers, kings, rulers across uh, the centuries have seen fit to include certain bits and pieces. The Apocrypha, which means non-canonical, was included in the King James Bibles originally. And uh, you, you, you have that. It doesn't mean that it's part of God's Word. Should it be included in the bindings? Absolutely not. I don't think it should be. I think it is completely out of place. It is um, unnecessary. It's unhelpful. It risks equating the words breathed out by God um, through various individuals, various times, uh, compiled over the course of about 1,500 years of human history. It, it risks equating that with a much more recent, important, but far inferior document. And to pledge allegiance, I mean, I have my own issues with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. My pledge yeah, careful of what you say, not, yeah. you might not be allowed to go back home soon. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a while anyway, but, uh, you know, you, th there is a sense of respect. R you have to respect. You need to show respect and honor for your country. I love my home country. I love my home state. I love the people in it. Uh, my heart has been broken by seeing the state of affairs on both sides of this political equation. I don't think many people are happy on either side. And yet somehow we've arrived at this place. Look, 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 well, at least we can have this conversation because, you know, we are um, in this country, in the United Kingdom, we have a general election coming up sometime in the autumn where Christianity and God are not even, there isn't any political party. It's just bizarre uh, to even. Within Parliament, yeah. there are on the fringes that are standing on Judeo-Christian values. There aren't any. Yeah. They're all liberal. 
that effectively there's not much difference between it depends how much liberalism you want but whether you vote for the conservatives whether you vote for the labor party the liberal democrats the scottish nationalists uh, the welsh pride cymru um and the only area where we see this is in northern ireland uh, with the likes of the uh, dup mm. and other parties is where you see the influence of our judeo-christian heritage having an impact in politics uh, you know it's that famous quote by alistair um campbell who was the press advisor to tony blair yeah. uh when uh, tony blair was prime minister was that we don't do god yeah. so the fact is that it's in the states you can have that discussion about where Christianity fits into the political system, but whether you should have endorse a Bible that is a patriotic Bible with the US Constitution and the Pledge of Allegiance to the Stars and Stripes is another matter, but at least there is that conversation. At least there is that uh, uh, ability to say, I don't support this progressive liberal agenda being pursued by the Democrats, at least he's talking, Trump is talking about the Bible. How, how, how deep that is? Um, how deep that goes down to his, how much he understands all of that, I don't know. But the fact he's talking about it, the, the fact he's giving Christians a platform in America politically, um, particularly in this age of secular humanism, uh, whereby we want to legislate God out of everything, is actually refreshing. Um, but my concerns are that, you know, it, it, and these are the big criticisms of uh, President Trump and his new God bless the Bible has come from, from the Democrats and the left. So uh, um, there's an article here uh, saying how that God bless the USA Bible has come under attack. So Trump's God bless the, the USA Bible has come under attack from Senator uh, Raphael uh, Warnock, who's also a reverend, uh, said the former president selling branded Bibles is a risky business. Given the sins of his life, according to criticism against the former president related to the deal. Uh, I mean, I, I really think that Warnock, as much as I disagree with his politics, does actually have a point. He's uh, a reverend. I don't fully understand how you can remain a part of the Democratic Party. I do know that there are. I, I, I can't speak for this individual, but there are still some on the fringe of the Democratic Party who are pro-life, who are, are pro-Christian um, ethic, um, and have tried to represent within the party, again, extreme fringe. But uh, on Sunday, he gave his Easter sermon at Ebenezer Baptist Church, Martin Luther King Jr.'s church in Atlanta. And he said that the selling of Bibles, uh, selling the Bibles, these Bibles, it goes against the tenets of Christianity. And the Bible does not need Donald Trump's endorsement, Warnock said uh, Sunday in a CNN State of the Union interview with Dana Bash. Jesus, in the very last week of his life, chased the money changers out of the temple, those who would take sacred things and use them as cheap relics to be sold in the marketplace. The sad thing is that none of us are surprised by this. This is what we expect from the former president. At the end of the day, I think he's trying to sell the American people a bill of goods. He noted that Bible sales were ironic given Trump's history of lying, saying the folks who buy those Bibles might actually open them up where it says things like, thou shalt not lie or shalt not bear false witness, where it warns about wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing. I think we ought to be careful. This is a risky business for somebody like Donald Trump. And I think there's little one can say against those words. Whatever else is going on in relation to uh, Reverend Warnock and his own uh, life and belief, I actually have sympathy with what he is saying there. I, I find it unseemly that a president who is currently going through four criminal cases with very serious allegations and charges, some of which seem highly credible, who only last year was found guilty in another criminal case of sexual assault. Um, I, you know, going back, historically you have things. Are we forgiven when we confess our sins? Absolutely. When we go to the Lord Jesus in a newness of heart given by the Holy Spirit, yes, there's that meaningful transformation that is worked. But unfortunately, guys, I just don't see meaningful repentance. I've never heard and, and there are many of you who might very well say, oh, but, but doesn't Jesus forgive? Doesn't God forgive? Absolutely. To the one who says, forgive us our trespasses. To the one who says, 
I've sinned. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Did God forgive David? Yes, but David actually wept and he fasted and he said, I've sinned. I've sinned. I've yet to hear Donald Trump say that. In fact, I've seen the opposite with him saying that he has no regrets or he's never made a mistake. These sorts of things are just completely antithetical to uh, um, the Christian life that we should be seeking to live. Yeah. Also, we see that uh, the new uh, Trump Bible or the uh, God Bless USA Bible has also faced criticisms from within the left wing of the Republican Party. Uh, as we say here that uh, the Bible sales have been widely criticized and mocked since their announcement of being featured on Saturday Night Live, which is the American political satire comedy, and denounced by former Republican uh, uh, Liz Cheney. Uh, there we go, Saturday Night Live uh, comedy sketch of uh, Donald Trump. Uh, it says here that uh, Cheney said uh, Tuesday that instead of selling Bibles, Trump should probably buy one and read it including Exodus 20 verse 14, Cheney added, referring to the verse that commands, thou shall not commit adultery. Uh, and we see this one. But I mean, if we, if we actually see, so Trump has uh, produced his own Bible called the uh, God Bless the USA Bible. Um, but he also spoke uh, during this election campaign back in February, for example, at the Religious Broadcasters and Convention about his Christian values, the RNB, and this is what he says. So according to the US broadcaster PBS uh, News under the headline, Trump says uh, he'll defend Christianity from radical left that seeks to tear down crosses. Uh, and this is what he says. He says, speaking at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Nashville, uh, back in February, former President Trump promised to use a second term in the White House to defend Christian values and even suggested he'd shield the faith's central um, iconography, warning a convention of religious broadcasters on Thursday night that the left wants to tear down crosses. It says, remember, every communist regime throughout history has tried to stamp out the churches like every fascist regime has tried to co-opt them and control them. Trump told hundreds of cheering attendees at the National Religious Broadcasters International Christian Media Convention in Nashville, and in America, the radical left is trying to do both. They want to tear down crosses where they can and cover them up with social justice flags, but no one will be touching the cross of Christ under the Trump administration, I swear to you. Now, now clearly, President Trump as the former president who was in office from 2017 to 2020 up until the inauguration of Joe Biden uh, in mid-January of 2021. Um, he has promoted Christians to the forefront of, uh, of the US administration, including his vice president, Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, um, and also including as well his uh, running partner as well, who was the uh, uh, Nikki Haley, the, uh, his ambassador to the United Nations. But how much, how much credit can we give Mike Pence for the way that the Trump administration took on board Christian policies and Christian ideals, including allowing so many Christians to pray and intercede in the White House, standing up for the persecuted church, defending Israel, defending the unborn. Uh, and I think um, President Trump was the first person ever, to sp American president, to speak at the United Nations Security Council to defend the unborn. Yeah, I think Pence was largely responsible for many of those um, pr progressions in the U.S. legislature. I think what we saw with Pence was clarity, compassion as well, strength, good leadership, and uh, consistency. So where he disagreed with Trump, he didn't feel like he had to parrot. He didn't feel like he had to um, stick up. He was loyal. Uh, but he remained principled. And so uh, there was a lot to learn from um, President Trump, definitely, in r relation to um, Pence's behavior. But of course, Pence is not going to be Trump's running mate uh, this coming November. So let's uh, remind ourselves of uh, this speech where we see that uh, former US president and presidential candidate Donald Trump said that he would defend Christian values and this took place at the RMB back in February. 
Former President Trump addressing an enthusiastic crowd at the annual National Religious Broadcasters Convention, the organization celebrating its 80th anniversary this year. This great organization has helped spread the word of God, the love of Christ, the stories of the Holy Bible, and the voices of famed evangelical people and evangelists, evangelists like the late, great Pat Robertson, who was a great gentleman, got to know him very well. Great evangelist. And, of course, Billy Graham. How good was Billy Graham, right? CBN White House correspondent Abigail Robertson at the gathering in Nashville. President Trump's marks the sixth time a former or sitting president has addressed the NRB. President Biden and GOP primary candidate Nikki Haley were also invited to speak, but declined. In his speech, Trump touted the accomplishments of his first administration, including his record on abortion, Israel, the Supreme Court and judges, and religious liberty. And I will fight even harder for Christians with four more years in the White House. We did things that uh, the likes of which nobody has ever done for Christians in this country. In another announcement, he promised to create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias. But no one will be touching the cross of Christ under the Trump administration. I swear to you, that will never happen. Never happen. And we have to save our country. But Christians, they can't afford to sit on the sidelines in this fight. They have to really get out there. They have to do what they have to do, and they have to win. The former president is moving on to the next Republican primary tomorrow in South Carolina. Trump is looking for another early state sweep after big wins in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada. And polling suggests he'll easily get it. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Well, thank you as always to our friends at CBN for their helpful reporting. I, one of the questions that we have to ask Simon, and I, it's something I've been keeping up over the past couple of years, is what does this have to do with the increase in certain circles of what's being billed as Christian nationalism? What even is Christian nationalism? Well, I mean, there's particular um, ideas that are presented behind it, but uh, according to Britannica, we'll just go with the encyclopedia definition for a minute. Uh, Christian nationalism is the belief that an ideology that seeks to create or maintain a legal fusion of Christian religion with a nation's character. Advocates of Christian nationalism consider their view of Christianity to be an integral part of their country's identity and want the government to promote or even enforce the religion's position within it. Now, certainly that is, uh, there's a lot in that that we can sympathize with. There's a lot in that that we think, oh, okay, well, what's the issue? The issue is, as so often is the case, the, the terminology and the outworking of it uh, infringes on religious liberty of others. It tries to resolve spiritual issues by political means and completely avoids and ignores the words of Jesus on, you know, put your sword away, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was of this world, we would go about this a different way. It tries to attain the transformation that the society needs by enforcing and legislating specific Christian principles, almost to the degree of forcing belief on others, which is not something that can be done. Should morality be legislated? Absolutely, as we've said, but Christianity is not something that you can legislate as true Christianity is a matter of, of the heart. Yeah, no, I, I, I would um, I, I actually believe, particularly as it relates to Great Britain, as it relates to the United States in Christian nationalism, because primarily because of the heritage of both our nations. The fact that both our nations are being founded on Judeo-Christian heritage, that our nations have sent uh, missionaries around the world, have spread the gospel around the world. Uh, our nations have been the defenders of liberty and freedom um, throughout the last century, um, particularly during the First and the Second World War and the Cold War. We've been, uh, our nations have been a bastion of freedom. And what has allowed that has been uh, the influence of Christianity within our democratic institutions, which yeah. ultimately stems from the Bible. But the, the, where it becomes dangerous is when you start to impose a political theology 
right. on the nation state. That's but different. That's, or, and that's Christian nationalism. Or, or if you come into the concept of wanting mm -hmm. to uh, believe in um, kingdom now theology, mm -hmm whereby you believe you have to take the kingdoms of this world for God, and then when Christianity has, has effectively got a world government all over the world, you can say, look, Jesus, we've, uh, we've created a kingdom for you, come back and take it. I don't believe in that, and I, I think that borderlines heresy because it's complete Agreed. contradiction of Bible-believing teaching of what the end days will be like, the idea that there will be a mass falling away. But having, having said that, I still believe that the governments can be and should be influenced by, by the Bible, by prayer, by godly men and women making godly righteous decisions on behalf of the nations. Right but not bringing about a religious theology as we saw in the Middle Ages, and that was absolutely disastrous. Right. And, and, and then and the state is controlled. Yeah. It suppresses even Christians yeah. who have a slightly different interpretation of yeah. things. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of the, but what you've described there, uh, the good elements of Christian practice, that's being missional, that's being uh, focused on fulfilling that great commission, that's being Christ-minded and seeking to see the light of Christ shine through society in its legislation and in all of that. Christian nationalism, while we could potentially stretch the definition and say, well, what, what you've just presented as a good um, could find its place there and some might want to do that. There are very rational, reasonable individuals who care uh, about Jesus reaching all nations who are described as and smeared as Christian nationalists. Um, because Christian nationalism, uh, it, it, uh, the definition is primarily being linked increasingly in the U.S. to a book um, called The Case for Christian Nationalism by an individual named Stephen Wolf. Um, this is the long and short um, of it, a, a very conservative, Republican sympathizing, although I, um, I, he is Canadian himself, I believe, but uh, conservative commentator on this book. He was eager to read serious exploration of it and to kind of consider whether or not this is something we should consider, said the underlying message of Wolf's book was this, that ethnicity shouldn't mix, that heretics can be killed, that violent revolution is already justified, and that what our nation needs is a charismatic Caesar-like leader to raise our consciousness and galvanize the will of the people. And uh, you know, that seems overstated. I followed for a time the author on uh, X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, and found myself horrified at the casual anti-Semitism um, and, and racism on display since October the 7th, for instance. Why should Americans care about Israel? We are Israel, as uh, we are Christians, you know. And this, uh, all of this is attached to what you were saying, that Kingdom Now type. Yeah, I, okay, but this, this is where it gets complicated, and this is why it's yeah. good to have a discussion on you, because I, I, I think as a, a true believer in mm. Jesus mm. Christ, you do become a patriot. Right, yeah. you do become a patriot, whether, be it's, patriot. Whether, it, whether, it's, whether it's of the United Kingdom or whether it's the United States. You care about your government. Absolutely. You care about how you are being governed. You care about the rise of, of evil that we're seeing in both of our nations. We care about the nation state, particularly as we see, for example, our own government, um, even though that uh, the British people voted to leave the European Union back in June of 2016. Uh, we voted to be an independent nation state. Mm -hmm. um, your American patriots also want America to be an independent nation state. Um, and do not want to be a kind of globalist. So therefore, they realize that, for example, that nationalism plays a role within the church. It plays a role within the nation. And when that nation is threatened, as, uh, as Britain was during the Second World War, as the United States was during the Second World War, we took arms to defend our Christian civilization. And that's being a good patriot. Um, that is being someone who recognises the freedoms that have been God-given in our nations. And this is why our nations are the leaders of the world, because of the freedom that we have in Christianity. And this is uh, another reason why it's imperative, I believe, that Christians get involved in politics. And of course, what we see with the American political system is that Christians have an opportunity to have a huge influence 
over the, over the Republican Party to the extent where any presidential candidate wanting the nominee for the Republican Party has to oppose abortion. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a major victory that uh, um, American Christians have achieved through the Republican Party. It hasn't happened here with the Conservative Party. We don't have that uh, political engagement uh, within the major political parties that we are forced to be reckoned with. You do in the States. So, I mean, there, there are different cultural issues at stake here, but, you know, it's important also to, to care for the president, to Absolutely. pray for the nation and to pray for those in authority. Um, but I think the difference is where you, are warped into a theology that says let's let's make Christianity the national religion of the United States. Um, let's now introduce penalties for those who don't don't follow and stuff as well. Then you're going into the whole area of kind of medieval Christendom with the influence of Rome, and you have that uh, interlocking um, agreement between the church and the state and then the state controls the church, uh, and therefore there's no freedom in Christ because we realize that it's only through the power of the gospel, it's only through the power of Jesus Christ that can change people's hearts. That is what changes society, not governments. Yeah. Go yeah. Governments can't change society. Well, and this is why- Only Jesus can change the human heart. This is what this review by Kevin D. Young says, I love my nation and I want to see it become more Christian mostly by regeneration, but also by the good that comes from cultural Christianity. We should pray and labor for all of that. I just don't think that equals Christian nationalism as it has now been offered to us. And I, I have immense sympathy with that portrayal, with that point of view. Um, now, there's some perspective. It's interesting to read some of the perspectives and polling in relation to um, Trump in a survey conducted by Harris X for Deseret News. 64% uh, of Republicans think Donald Trump is a person of faith, uh, up from 53% in October. Now, in regard to former Vice President Mike Pence, an evangelical Christian, he, he came in second with Republicans with 56% calling him a man of faith, which is truly incredible because Mike Pence has been so much more outspoken about his evangelical faith than Donald Trump. So uh, for him to actually rank less than Donald Trump is uh, truly remarkable. Uh, GOP uh, respondents um, were less likely to say Trump is religious, which is interesting, and pointed to his support for religious people, not his personal religiosity as their reasoning for saying he is a man of faith, according to Deseret News. Unlike Pence and other prominent Republicans, Trump rarely talks about his religious beliefs. We've already indicated that. You can see him mention the idea of God on a routine basis, but he doesn't really personalize it or speak in any way concerning um, himself. Yeah, but also, I mean, if we compare, say, for example, his main um, rival, uh, Joe Biden, who's a, a Catholic, and oh, we yeah. look at his voting record on all the big uh, political issues mm. uh, but as they relate to and affect Christians, he's voted for the liberals, he's then voted on, he's, he's double-minded in all of his ways. Um, and, uh, you know, um, under his leadership, you know, America has become more woke, it's become more liberal, it's become more progressive, it's become more global. What did uh, he do um, on Easter? Well, tell me what he did on Easter. Well, and Easter Sunday, you know, this is the day that we reflect on the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, Biden took Easter Sunday as the day to inaugurate uh, for the, the very first time what he refers to as Trans Visibility Day. Okay, uh, this is something that he's advocated on Easter Sunday. Now, we're talking about an individual who claims to be Roman Catholic. He has been in some cases by some rather uh, brave individuals refused communion, but by and large has been wholly accepted as uh, his uh, crimes against really the scriptures, but also uh, the Roman Catholic Church have been completely swept under uh, the rug by and large by, by many. Uh, they're completely out of place with Christian ethos. Now, what I would say to those who might push back, and here, here's the issue I, I've made very clear, Simon, I am not someone who's going to be winning necessarily too many plaudits or friends uh, in relation to Asad I'm taking because I 
I'm not going to be voting for Donald Trump, and I'm not going to be voting for President uh, Biden. I, I'm simply not. I have the freedom to not vote just as much as I have the freedom uh, one to vote. And I'm exercising my, uh, my God-given right to not vote on this case, uh, sullying my conscience for individuals who I think are doing equal damage um, to the nation as a whole. On Biden's case, flagrantly anti-Christian in its perspective and its outlook. In Donald Trump's case, representing and reflecting, um, claiming, having the, the veneer of godliness but denying its power, yeah, which can actually be even more damaging because you're saying, I'm a Christian, I believe this, and others are looking and saying, if that's, if that's Jesus, I don't want anything to do with it. Yep. So you won't be buying the uh, God Bless USA Bible anytime soon then? No, I won't be buying the God Bless the USA Bible anytime soon. Well, which really leads me on, for example, if, for example, we saw a personal confession of faith by uh, the Republican presidential candidate, Donald Trump, maybe also a kind of uh, national kind of repentance, um, for his actions and his behavior. Yeah. Would you then say that God is doing something in his heart on the fact uh, that yes. God can still work and use someone like Trump someone to bring about God's that. purposes? I would love that. We're down to the last minute of the program, but yes, I would, I, I, I would relish seeing Donald Trump say, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I have failed, but I trust that he can forgive. Uh, but we're, we're at the end of the program. Maybe we'll have to talk about this. I'm sure we'll be talking more in coming days as we approach the election. Viewers, thank you very much. Simon, thank you very Pleasure. much. Let's continue to pray for the United States as it heads towards its upcoming November election. And God bless you. I continue to guide and guard us all as we seek His way, His kingdom first, above all others. <laughs>